Oh yes. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, rather good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. To the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, this is St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Spirit of Mosi, the Son of the Day, Espero Machismo. I am coming to you, people, you have to know your rights. People, you have to know your rights. And you have to test the system that you're in. If you don't test the system, you will never know how corrupt the system are. People, there are too much irregularities that are happening in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I know K. Bacchus and Bruce and my Eustace and all those people are volunteering their time and their main concern is to get you out of a lock up and to help you from getting a conviction um, and that is their main concern but people you have to know your rights and you have to try and ask these lawyers to help you to pursue justice and if you pursue justice and you get a reward, then you can pay them. You understand? I know most of you don't have any money to pay these lawyers that are helping you out. But people, we have to know our rights. I'm going to bring you some simple things here that can solve the problem with the commission of police, the, the constant arrest of Patches Knight King, the constant arrest of Kenson King, the con constant arrest of What's it? Um, what's, my, what's my girl name there? And these other people, you understand? Ariana King. And these other people, they are some simple, simple things that the police, some simple things. The police are violating these people's rights. And there is a simple way to stop this. Right? Let us deal with this today. Let, us, let me show you how Mr. John Wright was violated by that police officer who took him out, right? How the police not only violate Mr. John Wright, but cause Mr. John to violate his own rights in the way they release him, people. These are some simple things that the lawyer should pick up on. But I know the lawyers are volunteering their service. And their main, their main objective is to try and get these people out of lockup and try to prevent them from getting a criminal record. But if you are going to help these people, I think you should help them all the way. All the way because if they get a judgment in a civil matter, then they will be able to pay you for the work that you do for them. So people, let us discuss this matter. Let, us, let me show you how the rights of Adriana King, Kenton King, Patches Knight are being violated and how the lawyers could stop it from being violated. People, if we don't test the system, we would never know how corrupt the system is, right? So let us discuss this. If you're going to hang out with me for the next couple of minutes, I want you to share this video. Share this video on your page. Share it on a friend page. Share it in a group. Share it in a room. And when you share it, please tag someone in it. I'm not going to be begging to share this video as I normally do, but if you think that the people on the ground needs to hear what I have to say, share this video. People, I know why you don't share my video now. Because my stance on rape, my stance on homosexuality, and my stance on abortion offends a lot of you. And you will listen to me. But you'll never help me to get an audience other than your presence. Right? You'll listen to me because you want to know. So people, if you're going to share this video, please share it now. And when you share it, let me know that you share it so I can big up. Who is there with me today? Let me see who is here with me today. I have seven people here. Seven people online with me today. Now it's jumped to eight. People we are going to discuss something very important. If you want to know your rights, especially as it relates to the police, this is what I'm going to talk about today. Right? Because you see, and we're going to talk about how we are going to hold the police accountable. You understand? You have to hold the police accountable. For example, now, just out there, I see the LAPD are out there. They have about six black men arrested, right? They have no authority to arrest those black guys, but they don't listen. You understand? Those black guys don't listen. 
Those African Americans don't listen. They take they know all everything because they went to prison, right? And they always think if the police do it, they have the authority to do it. But that is not so. Let me explain this to you. For example, right here where I'm in, I'm in the Rose Garden. This is state property, right? Where they had the people arrested. That is on the train station that is county property. Between the Rose Garden and the train station, the public road is the only place that the LAPD has lawful authority to execute the law, right? When they come onto the premises where they, where they are, they're doing the investigation on the park for the state, they are just, they are just civilians. They have no lawful authority. They have no lawful authority to arrest anybody in a law enforcement capacity. When they go onto the train station, the same thing. So that is why these African Americans, their rights are always being taken away from them. Their rights are always being taken away from them. And they don't know because they never listen to anyone, especially if you have an accent. So people in St. Vincent the Grenadines, the rights of Vincentian are being taken away from them even now, right? Hey, Garfield Oliver, how are you doing, my brother? Good to have you. My childhood friend from Seventh-day Adventist Church. Nice to have you. Right? Their rights are being taken away right now, and they don't know. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the police has been abusing the rights of the citizen. Let me tell you, Patches Knight's king, his rights have been abused over and over and over. Adrian a king the same, Kenson king the same, this guy Ron Simmons, the same thing, right? But as I tell you, the lawyers who are volunteering their service, they are volunteering their service and their main objective is to get them out of lockup and to ensure they don't get a criminal record, right? But if you push the lawyers who are helping you to bring civil suits against the commissioner of police and the state of St. Vincent Grenadines, when you get your judgment, the lawyer will get paid. So they will not be, they will not be really button. Dotty, dotty. Oh, you tag him, you tag Mr. John in it. Right. Let me see who else are here. People, when you share this video, let me know that you share this video. Let me talk. Now, for example, right? The last protest on the ninth, we see Mr. John. Like, he, he don't have an identity of himself. The artist are about Senator John Husband. But the man have a false name. I don't even know his false name. Mr. John, the husband of Senator John, was attacked, viciously attacked by a male police officer. He was held in an unlawful chokehold. He was arrested, taken to the central police station. And he was later discharged without being bail. Right? It is alleged that Mr. John hit a female police officer on her hands. Now, that is only a common assault. This is no serious thing, a common assault, right? If he assaulted a police officer, that police officer who he assaulted by hitting her on her hands should have effect and arrest if she think the assault was intentional. If the assault was not intentional, it's an accident. There was a protest. There was crowded. The place was crowded. People were going back and forth. You understand? So it's not an assault. It's just that his hand touched the officer's hand. So it's not an assault. I see the Edomites came and they, they split up. <laughs> so it's not an assault. Right? You have to remember. An assault have to have some intent to it. If it is not an intentional act, then it is not an assault, right? So they are saying that he hit this officer on his hands. If it's accidental, it is not an assault. Now, the next, the next thing you have to consider, when this male police officer attacked Mr. John, was it brought to his attention by the female officer who he was alleged, who he have alleged to assault? Was it brought to her, or he saw it and just taken on himself 
that since he touched my colleague, he must be arrested. People, the law is clear and assault. There must be some intention to offend when there is an assault being committed, right? There must be an intention. Okay, Maxine, yeah, that's what we have to do. We have to ask the questions. There must be some intent if there's an assault, right? That means the person, it was an intentional act to hit her on her hands. If you are just walking by and your hand collides with another person's hand, it's not an assault. It is just an accidental touching. You understand? It is not an assault. And even though it was an assault, it was a common assault. It was not the kind of offense that merits an arrest, especially in a protest. Because in this case, the rightful thing to do was to take, say, Mr. John, I see you assaulted the police officer. Give me a name and your address, and I'm going to report to you. I'm going to report against you for assault by summons. Because it is not a serious offense, right? And in a protest where, it is, where, where there was a big crowd, it is more than likely it was an accidental collision of two people's hands who were in a crowd. It's like going to carnival and assaulting a man because he touched you while all he jumping up in, in the band. You understand? If you are in the band, you expect that the pure person next to you will touch you, will rub on you. Accidentally, sometimes it will intentionally. But you can't take that as serious, right? As long as it does not violate your person and touch a touch from a person next to you in a crowd cannot be considered an assault. And that is the truth. People share this video. Now, so therefore, Mr. John was arrested and he was discharged from the station and told to come back the following day. Is this lawful? Does Mr. John have any obligation to return to the station the next day? People, he don't have any obligation to return to the station the next day. There's a system that is in place. You see, if you remember, when you're dealing with police and court and people's rights, there are system and there are procedures on which these things must happen. Always remember that. There is a system that is set up and there are procedures in which these things must happen. For example, if a police officer arrests you, and he wants you to return to the station. He could only do one thing to get you to return to the station. Whether you're charged or not. Right? He has to release you on bail. If he does not release you on bail, you have no obligation to return to the station. Because remember, an arrest is the taking away of a person's liberty. And when a person is arrested, he can be released at any time during his arrest and after 48 hours if he is not charged and taken before the court he must be released either on his on the bail or he must just be sent away this is the law this is the laws and which police must operate by so when they allow mr john to leave the station without a bail without him signing a condition of his leave that he will return the following day. Mr. John has no obligation to return to the station, right? And he will not be in violation of any law. He, will, he cannot be picked up on a warrant because you can only get a warrant if the man refused to honor the contract he made between the police and himself or the state and himself to return to the police on a specific date. Listen to me. If you, if you are a defendant in a matter and the police arrest you, they can either charge you and take you, take you before the court or they can release you. Right? Or they can release you 
on bail, meaning there is a condition to your release. So therefore, when you're released on bail, they will tell you the condition, and the condition of your bail will be written on the, on the, on the bail bond. So now, if the condition is for you to return your next, if, if the condition of bail is for you to go to court, then you show up to court on the date and the time as embedded on the bail paper. If the condition of your bail, if you want to charge, and the condition of your release is to return to the police station, as long as you sign that bail, you have an obligation to return to the police because you will be in violation of the bail contract between the state and yourself. Always remember that. It's a contract between your state and yourself to return to the police or to go to court. That's what a bail is. It is nothing else but a contract between you and the state to take the action. You are agreeing to take the action as outlined on the bail. So when Mr. John was released, Mr. Hercules, thank you, Mr. Hercules. When Mr. John was released without bail, he has no obligation, even though the police tell him to return, to return to the station because there are procedures in place to get a person who is suspected of a crime or to return to the station. It is called bail, right? Now, let us, so if Mr. John returned to the station on Saturday as the police requested him to, he is doing it on his own will. He don't have any lawful or legal obligation to do this. Now remember in the beginning of the, this, this um, video, Leo Vida said that Patches Knights, Adriana King, Kenson King, and Ron Simmons have been having their rights violated. And this is just no ordinary rights. I'm going to tell them. I hope they, I hope they will see this video. And I hope Kebacus and Maya Eustace and Bruce is listening to this video. Because it's important that they listen to this video. It is important that you test the system to see how corrupt the system is. You understand? And have to test the system even to the appeal court. Because this is what I'm going to give you is a lawful act. It's a lawful procedure which the lawyers can take on behalf of those people who they choose to represent. Who they choose to represent pro bono. But... If they are willing to take the other step, they have to let the people who they are now representing pro bono know that if I take this matter civilly to the court, right, upon receiving a judgment, you will be required to pay for the service in the civil jurisdiction that I perform for you. It is, it is only fair. If the lawyers take a civil matter to court on your behalf and you get a judgment, then you are expected to pay them for their work from the judgment that you receive. Because I know most people would not have the money to pay the lawyers, right? So, Adriana Kenson, Patches, and Ron Simmons, consider this. Bring it to your lawyer's attention and let us see. Let us test the system and see if the system is so corrupt that they will not even allow certain office in the system to be accountable for their unlawful and illegal action. First thing, let me tell you how their rights have been violated. The Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines gave every citizen, which includes Adriana King, Kenson King, Patches Knights, Ron Simmons, and all of the other people who are now involved in the protests against the government of St. Vincent and Grenadines. It gave all of the, every citizen, the right or the protection from unlawful arrest and prosecution. It gave every citizen the right from unlawful arrest and prosecution. 
That is what the Constitution provides for every citizen in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Right? So anytime a police arrests a citizen, they must have just and lawful cause to effect that arrest. Meaning, there must be a lawful report that was made against them and they would have commit, committed a crime that has attached to it an arrest. You understand what I'm saying? Assault bodily harm, grievous bodily harm, and so forth. Those crimes has a mandatory arrest attached to it. But you can also proceed um, by summons, right? Or they will most have seen you commit an offense. You have to remember that some offense, even if the police see it and they don't act on it right away, the offense is squashed by, by virtue of inactivity at the time the offense was committed. I get the impression that the, that the offenses that Patches Knights, Adriana King, Kenson King, Colin Graham, and Ron Simmons have been given charge of that the police do not have the rights to come weeks after to arrest them for participating in a protest because the protest was not a protest where they were involved in committing a crime. It is like a police see you um, pack bad and a week later he come and give you a ticket and say last week I saw a car it was parked unlawfully I, that is unlawful yeah, that is unlawful because he does not have the right he has a right to issue a ticket when the car was in its violation and the same thing with the protest they have a right to make the arrest when the people were in the act of violating the law but that is not even that is not even the big part listen to this these people are being charged under an act that was passed in 1951 let me tell you something that the lawyers would know and the lawyers should know In 1951, St. Vincent and the Grenadines was still a colony of, you, of British. We were still a colony of England in 1951. Therefore, all of the laws of England automatically applied in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. What you would see happen, we will have um, the head of government would have been an English representative, the head of state, the governor, would have been an English representative, and all the heads would have been appointed by the king or the queen, whoever the monarchy would have been in 1951. So therefore, all of British, all of the British laws well, what the citizenry of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and all of the other colony had to comply with. We had to comply with the British law. Because remember before the British came, the French was here. And the British chased out the French and take over. So therefore, the French rule no longer apply. So all of the French law was kicked out and the British take over. So therefore, the country was now under British rule, British law. That's 1951. In 1965 or thereabout, St. Vincent and 69, I think, in 1969 or thereabout, St. Vincent and Grenadines get statehood. What does that mean? It means that now St. Vincent and Grenadines has now become a state and they can have their own law, their own um, self-governance where they elect a premier to run the affairs of government, right? 
So now we, we, we are now switching from being totally British to semi-independence where we are allowed to administer the affairs of our government. I'm going somewhere with these people. Be patient and learn. Listen, be patient. In 1979, we become independent, mean that we are now a sovereign state independent of British rules, British laws, right? We now become a sovereign state. Therefore, all of the British law, when we became independent, became null and void, unless our constitution has a clause in it that retain the British laws up to a certain time. Or that we retain such British law. Now, the fact that we are independent, we are still a part of the Commonwealth. The um, Privy Council is still our final court of appeal. So if we are going to use the Privy Council as the final court of appeal, it is important for us as an independent nation to ensure that our laws, our new laws, mimics that of the British laws. So when we take it to the Privy Council for interpretation, they are familiar with the British laws. For example, when England changed from the Larceny Act to the Theft Act, what happens? Soon after, St. Vincent and the Grenadines abolish the Larceny Act and they introduce the Theft Act. That is so that they could keep abreast with the changes of England because the Privy Council is still our final court of appeal. That is the reason why we change. So now people, I say all that to say this. When the Commission of Police charged Kenson King, Adriana King, Patches Knights King, Colin Graham, Ron Simmons, and the other people who he have charged under the statute from 1951, all of the charges are illegal. They are unlawful because they are all British law. What is Ralph Gonzalez going to do next? Is he going to dig up? Is he going to dig up laws from 1850? When St. Vincent was still a colony under slavery, is he now going to dig up those laws and institute them and say that all people of Afro descent are re enslaved? That's the next thing for him to do. Because if he is, if he is digging up colonial laws from 1951, to apply them to the citizenry of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, to oppress them. What is to stop him from going back to 1875 or 65 or 55 and bringing those post-slavery laws back and implement them in St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Because you have to remember, The administration of government are for gentlemen. And when you have tyrant administrating the affairs of government, they can do all of these things. Because, for example, a law may be unlawful, but it may still be on your books. The law may not have been repealed, but they're still there. But that doesn't mean they are enforceable, right? So the 1951 law under which Ralph Gonsav is now charging these people is unlawful. So therefore, each time they arrested Patches Knights, each time they arrested Adriana King, each time they arrested Kenson King, each time they arrest Ron Simmons, and when they arrest... Um, Colin Graham and charge him under a statute from 1951 post-independence. 
right? It's an unlawful arrest. It's an unlawful prosecution. All of these arrests are unlawful. The prosecutions are unlawful. Right? Remember, the police is not a authority all to themselves. The police have to comply and obey the laws of the land. Any, you cannot just bring any old British law that was implemented post-independent. The fact that Sindhus and the Grenadines became independence automatically null and void. Null and void those old laws. The fact that we had a new constitution now nullify those old laws. The fact that we had a recent criminal code now nullify those old laws. You have to remember that after a state become independence, the passage of a constitution and new criminal code nullify immediately the old one. These are simple things that a trained lawyer like Colin John should know. But they went to law school and they passed the test. Don't mean they understand what they're doing. Well, Conserv is not a lawyer. Here with Miranda, thank you for sharing. Well, Conserv is not a lawyer, so I don't expect him to know these things. You understand? And he's oppressive. So people remember, when you pass a new constitution, right? The old constitution no longer exists. When we had a new criminal code that governs protests and all of these things, it automatically nullify the old one that was being used before. For example, you don't go back and use the old criminal code and take a man to court for larceny. Why? Because when the theft act was passed in the new criminal code, the larceny act lose its authority to be enforced in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's simple. Simple common sense, simple logic, simple laws. These are the rule of law. Now, this is how you have to hold the commissioner accountable. And I hope one of you tag K. Bacchus, tag Bruce, tag Maya Eustace in this video. Because it's time that we start to test the system to see how in it deep entrench the corruption in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are. Now, the lawyers need to do. The lawyers need to go to the high court on behalf of those people whose name I have called, who have been having their constitutional rights abused and taken advantage of. The lawyers need to go and file an injunction in the High Court against the Commissioner of Police and the Sinvers and the Grenadines Police Force, barring them from arresting Adriana King, Kenson King, Patches Knights King, Colin Graham, Ron Simmons, um, Annie May Lewis, and all of those people who the police have been making it a point of order to arrest. And this is the condition that the lawyers need to request the High Court give in the injunction that they must pass. That, the, that none of these people must ever be arrested for the next 12 months unless the police present and information to a magistrate outlining the evidence and the information as to why these people must be arrested. They must bring statements to say that they committed a crime. They must bring the law which they are broken. They must bring an interpretation of the law that they are broken. And then, and only then, a magistrate of competent authority will issue them a warrant for their arrest. You understand? 
these people have had their rights violated for too long for too long the police had been you acting oppressively with these people so it's time that the lawyers file a restraining order against the poor commission of police and the St. Vincent Grenadines police force barring the police from arresting these people whose rights they have been trampling upon unless they get a warrant from a competent magistrate sitting in the state of St. Vincent and the Grenadines after having produced an information that outlined the law they have broken the report that was made against them and all of the ingredients that will justify their arrest people this can happen this has happened before in in, in the united states it has happened in every major country when the police try to use the authority that is invested in them to make the lives of citizens very uncomfortable if the high court right if the high court refuse it take it appeal it to the appeal court the appeal court and the high court will, will approve it because the high court officials will be fully aware that it is unlawful to implement a post-election, a post-independent colonial laws in the state of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is unlawful. It is unlawful. And especially when that post-independent colonial law run in contravention to the, con to the constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. People, you have to know your rights. You have to know your rights. You understand? And this is one way of holding the commission of police accountable and tying his hands and show him up for the dumps that he is. You understand? Show him up for the dumps that he is. I understand Colin John has not been paid for three months. I understand that. I understand Colin John has to impress Ralph Gonzalez in order to get the salary for the next month. And I understand that his heavy-handed way of dealing with these people is for him to get a salary. I understand that. But you have an obligation to the state. You have an obligation to the citizenry. You have an obligation to the laws of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And you have an obligation to go to law and order to ensure that when you execute the law, you execute the law to the letter of the law. Not for your personal benefit, but for the benefit of the jurisprudence for which you're operating in. People, this is serious, serious business. This problem are easily solved. This problem, it will take a little work. I know K have a private practice. I know K have been volunteering her service to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for the past 20 plus years. For free, pro bono she and it was she and Nicole Sylvester. Nicole Sylvester depart this earth. Now is she alone? People, LEPD. Any time I start a video, any time I do, any, if I go to the beach now, they will end up on the beach. I'll show you them later. You understand? This is what it is all about. Let me tell you something, people. We have a lot of young lawyers and citizens in the Grenadines who are looking for experience. If some of these young lawyers were ambitious, they would have been taking up these cases and testing the system and make a name for themselves. This girl, Ashel Morgan, could have been, well, been one of those lawyers, but instead, she chose to associate herself with criminality and become a criminal. Even my, my daughter, Alana Kamabash, she should be one of these lawyers who are now Standing up for the right of the people, this girl has power blood in her, and she's 
fooling around. She should be taking this, going to these people, taking this case. She's not ambitious. Taking this case to the court, trying to get an injunction against Colin John and the police and try to get it. You understand? Let Colin John and the police, after the injunction, on the hearing of the injunction, let them submit an opposition to the injunction, proving, let them submit an opposition to the injunction, barring him from arresting these people, proving that his use of the 1951 legislation, the post, the pre-independent, the pre-independent colonial legislation, his implementation of it is lawful. Let him prove it in writing. And let both lawyers come before the, 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 the judge and argue and let the judge make a decision based on the two points and then enforce the restraining order against the police, against these people. This is the only way you can do it. You have to show how you have to show the people that you mean business. Show the people that you mean business on their behalf. You understand? When the when 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 they when the lawyers allow Mr. John to return to the station on Saturday, contrary, he don't have no obligation to. They are showing weakness. That is why the police think they have the upper hand. Let Mr. John defy them. Defy them. Let Mr. John don't go back to the police. Right? Let me see where they can get a warrant for his arrest. Because they have no bail to take before the magistrate to say that we, this guy jumped bail or skipped bail or refused to answer bail. They have no document because he wasn't bail. He has no obligation to return to the police station to assist in their investigation. Has no authority whatsoever. And this is just a simple fact. This is just a simple fact. And the police cannot, as I said before, I'm just recapping now. The allegation, let me recap, people. The allegation against Mr. John is that he is alleged to hit a police officer on her hands. Hands. This is your hand. This is your forearm. This is your arm, right? On her hands. That means he either spank her or there was an accidental meeting of both hands. Therefore, when the police approach mr john he had no lawful authority because there was a protest you have to look at the condition that's around the place he had no lawful authority for there was a protest they were in a crowd and if two people hands put up in the crowd it's not an assault it's an accidental touching right and once you are in a crowd whether you're police or civilian you have to expect to be touched by other members in the crowd so it was an idiotic decision for him to go and approach Mr. John. He had no reason to approach Mr. John. He had no lawful reason for arresting the man. And when the police released Mr. John, Mr. John had no reason, no lawful reason to go back to the police. I'm recapping. I should not have gone back to the police. Let me see them get a warrant for his arrest and let them justify the warrant in court. Let them bring the justice of the peace. You see, the lawyers have to, the lawyers have to be more. If the warrant was signed by just let the justice of the peace come on which, on what evidence did you sign this warrant? You understand? Because the justice of the peace is not an authority for themselves they have to be accountable for the action that they take anytime you sign a warrant for police as a justice of the peace you have to ensure that the person who the warrant of arrest is for the rights is not being violated you have to make sure 
that they have violated a, 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 an offense that is arrestable right before you sign a, a warrant they have to work with the statements you have the authority to ask them for the statement to justify the wrong that you're going to sign you have the authority of the justice of the peace to read the statement and satisfy yourself that the allegation in the statement is as such that merits you as the justice of the peace put in your signature and giving the police the authority to arrest take away a person's liberty you have to remember the justice of the peace is a magistrate an untrained magistrate an unqualified magistrate he has all the powers of a magistrate therefore he has the power to demand that the police bring the statements before he sign a warrant and people if you know any justice of the peace tag them in this so that they could know because a lot of them are, are appointed just to the peace and they don't even really understand their, their, um, the power that they have. The police, the, just, the police have to treat the justice of the peace with the same level of respect and reverence that they treat a magistrate. And people, in, in finishing up now, I'm going to say the use of a pre-independent colonial law from 1951 is unlawful because when St. Vincent Grenadines enacted their criminal code, all of the law, all of the other laws prior to the criminal code, code of St. Vincent Grenadines, whenever it was enacted, becomes null and void. When St. Vincent Grenadines enacted our constitution, the old constitution becomes null and void. It has no power. So therefore it is unlawful for this idiot that sits in the seat of commissioner and this idiot, the shit stain of the Caribbean that sits in the office of Prime Minister of St. Vincent Grenadines to use these heavy-handed tactics to oppress these people because they are standing up for their rights. Hi, holy love. You're late. I will spank you when I catch you. People, I want to read you. What is your views on the checking and holding and arrest of Sherian Kane? I don't know. I don't know what is the situation behind Sherian Kane. What I will do, I'll go and check it out. And when I check it out, I may just either do a short video or do a live, and I will just sort thing. I don't know who Sherry and Kane is. I don't know what is this situation surrounding her. People, I know all of you think that I just get all the information. If you don't tell me what happens, I will not know what happened. Thanks to um, some of you on Facebook that send me inbox, and can I keep me up to date? Um, but if you don't tell me what happened, I would not know what happened. I didn't know who, who Sherry and Kane is. I do not know if she was arrested. I don't know what is her situation. But if you send me some inbox about her situation, I'll check it out. And I could do another video on Sherry and Kane's business. Maxine Gibson. Okay, yes, that's from earlier. Garfield Oliver, that's the first man that came on. I hope. I hope this was beneficial to you. I hope you learned something. People, please share this video. Share this video for me as much as you can. She's the lady who was holding on to Mr. John when the police held him in a chokehold. Oh, I, 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 I actually don't know. I actually don't know. No, people, let me just be honest with you. If the police is effect, is effecting an arrest, um, for you to get involved is called obstruction, right? So, if you as a citizen think that the police was endangering a person's life, you can get involved. The police is not an authority on themselves. 
if you think that the action of the police is endangering a person's life you can get involved they could arrest you yes they will arrest you yes they will take you to court but your defense your defense is that the action of the police at the time that you got involved was putting an innocent citizen's life in danger but you have to prove it you have to prove it by witnesses and by giving an account of what have happened right and in this day and age where there are video everybody have a video of everything that happened it is easy to prove so her case will be thrown out if that is the situation because the police in putting mr john in a chokehold was endangering his life the police anytime the police break the law is the citizen have to keep them accountable when the police approach mr john it was unlawful he broke the law when the police attempt to arrest mr john it was unlawful he broke the law but when the police put mr john in a chokehold it was unlawful and he had in he was endangering a man's life she had a right to step in as a concerned citizen to ensure that mr life mr john's life was not prematurely taken that's a defense you understand and no sensible police authority or no sensible dpp will prosecute such a case because the evidence is there to see that mr john was in great distress and had he not been helped by those around he might have been dead today so she was in her rights to try and prevent the police from committing a crime that would have endangered the life of a citizen let me tell you something no police no police have the rights to follow an unlawful law from their supervisor no police whatsoever no police whatsoever so if colin john come down let me tell you something right when i was policing mr Crow used to meet those guys especially in barley superintendent crow hey arrest him i hear him because of that word and these police were so afraid of mr Crow, they'll go and arrest the person they don't have no authority to do that they have no authority to do that right the use of an indi indecent language in an, is an infraction or what you call a, an infraction. It's not even a criminal offense. Right? The police can only arrest if that was committed in his presence. If Crow, as a commissioner of police, saw somebody breaking the law, a law that the police has only the authority to arrest when he witnessed it, that police mr crow cannot instruct the police to arrest this guy mr crow have to arrest that guy himself because he is who witnessed the offense being committed and when he have arrested him he may hand him over to the constable to be taken to the station but the arrest must be affected by mr crow i tell you this to tell you that when i went to to barley to work mr crow never tried to stroke with me because I would already told his poor people, next time don't arrest them. I was just a constable. He was a superintendent. Next time, let him arrest them himself and let him hand them over to you. He never tried that. Let me tell you something. No police officer, where is Dotish man Clarkson Francis, right, has the authority to follow any unlawful instruction that was given to them by the superior no ssu officer no black squad officer no constable sergeant or inspector has any authority to follow any unlawful order given to them by their supervisor none whatsoever so when these people do this foolishness they have no excuse because no commissioner could give them the right to break the laws of the state this is simple fact they have no excuse.
You can't be a police officer and be a criminal at the same time. Anytime you violate the law that governs your ability to act on behalf of the state, you are a criminal. Listen to me, people. These are simple, simple, simple things. So the lady would be arrested. She would be charged for obstruction. But her defense is simple. The police had broken the law against Mr. John on three occasions. And the second, the third occasion, he was not only violating the man's right and breaking the law, he was endangering his life and she stepped in. She stepped in because if she didn't step in, Mr. John would have been dead today and the video evidence is there to support her. And people, let me tell you something. Don't let nobody violate your rights and get away. An eye for eye, a tooth for tooth. If Colin John wants to give the people, Colin John drive home, I show Colin John park his car by the side of the road. An eye for eye, a tooth for tooth. Don't afraid them. You understand? And if you see them violating a, a person's rights, and they catch them in the right place, an eye for eye, a tooth for tooth. If somebody wanna if, if they want to break the law against you as citizen, you break the law against them as a citizen. If they are given the authority to uphold the law and they want to break the law, you have a right to break the law against them too. Don't be so stupid to break it in front of their face. When they back turn, whack them. You understand? Don't be afraid. Let me tell you something. When the police becomes a criminal, the state get vigilantes. When the police becomes a criminal, the state get vigilante. You, as citizens and the Grenadines, have to make up your mind to become a vigilante. Let me tell you something. Most of you know me. I'm a straight guy. Straightforward, telling the truth. I deal with everybody on the same level. Your money and your wealth don't make you more important than a poor person. Everybody who knows me in St. Vincent know that. I treat everybody the same because we are all flesh and blood. You understand? Not because you have a big job, I can treat you different and treat this man, this poorly man different. No. I treat everybody the same. You understand? When I come to this place, I never thought. I all thought about defending myself and fighting with my hands. But there come a time when I said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Let me tell you something, man. The first two people I, 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 I got vicious with. Ralph Gonsav men, Chitstein men sent two girls to me. I was going to, 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 to um, San Francisco to file a report against some judges. Send these two girls. I stop up those two girls. I, stop, I am afraid. I stop them up. Spent two days in the cell. But because I know what I was doing, the district attorney showed the case. Next day they send two guys on the train. I stop them up again. I'm, I'm telling you this, that at times you have to change your mindset to match the situation around you. Change your mindset to match the situation around you. You don't let people walk in you and just walk away. You have to become violent and vigilant. Listen to me. Since I stab up those four people, all of them watch me. I walk midnight, go pass through the, the neighborhoods, and they just watch me. People, you have to change the way you think. You have to change the way you do things based on the condition that confronts you. People, you know me. I have dealt with many of you on different occasions. You know I'm an honest guy. Those people in Fair Hall and Chateau Bel Air and Barrelly and Georgetown and Bayabu and Greggs and all those places, low mans, they will tell you the kind of person I am. Even in my inbox, 
People are sending inbox to me and say, Pama, we miss you, AD. Pama, we want you. But St. Vincent ain't ready for a redeemer. St. Vincent not ready for a redeemer. You already messed up like the African Americans here. You understand? They, they were free. They were made free from slavery. And now they're back in slavery again. A slavery that they will never be free from. St. Vincent not ready for a redeemer. I will be back in St. Vincent. But only when the people are ready to have me back. I have, listen to Ralph Gunn, have an easy problem to solve. Easy problem to solve. My mindset, you got to be kidding. But you ain't ready for me yet. People, my name is Alan Palmer. St. Vincent Grenadine's favorite of most hated son. I want you to share this video. Share this video on your page. Share it on a friend page. Share it in a group. Share it in a room. And when you share it, tag someone in it. People, this is all I had to say today. I am happy that you came and spent some time with me. If you don't agree with me, let me know that you don't agree with me. My Baba, I know I could depend on you to share this video. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my Baba. All right, people, we'll talk soon. Uh, Vincent's not good people, but you're not ready for deliverance. In the same way, you me you you you'll mess it up like the American, the Black Americans here. I'll be back in St. Vincent now, soon too. Because the Most High, the Most High is planning this thing out. I'll see you all. Have a good one.